So good morning, everyone. Welcome. I am Anne Cassapini, and it's such a pleasure to lead you in practice today. We'll do an overall practice with a meditation, a guided meditation, and we'll finish with Shavasana. So let's begin with some centering. I'll call centering. Sit toward the middle front of your chair or however you're sitting. Just bring your attention into the foundation, whatever part of your body is touching the floor or a prop. And allow those parts of your body to settle. Settle the feet, settle the hips, settle your hands on your lap. And from that grounding, then breathe in, lengthen in your spine, lift your sternum, even float the fronts of the shoulders up and back. Shoulder blades draw in towards spine, back of neck is long. And take a moment now to close your eyes, or three quarters close your eyes and gaze at a point in front of you. Draw your attention inward. Gently breathe in. Gently breathe out. Welcome yourself to your practice, exactly how you are today, exactly how you're feeling. You don't have to change anything. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And as you continue this mindful breathing, I invite you to set your own intention for today's class. I mean, our group intention that I like to suggest for today is that these practices will bring us more ease in body, mind, and spirit. So go ahead and perhaps add one of your own more, more detailed. All right, great. So now let's come up to standing. And please place your chair. Actually, have the, the seat facing you today. The four feet of your chair are going to be nice and solid on your mat. Come to stand in the middle of your mat with your feet parallel, four to six inches apart. With hands on hips, bend your knees. I want you to root down through your feet. And rooting through the big toe mounds, the inner heels, the pinky toe mounds, and the outer heels, then lift and spread as many toes as you can. This is going to create some lifting in the inner and outer arches, drawing some muscular energy up into the bottom of your pelvis. Can you feel that? Pulling the energy up from the earth. And then from this same place in the bottom of your pelvis, now root down through your bones, release the toes. You'll feel a rebound effect. Your upper body lifts. Take your hands to the side, palms face forward, and stand in mountain pose. Gently breathe in, breathe out, strong like a mountain. I love to begin in this Tadasana pose, just as a reminder that we need to stand firm no matter what's going on around, right? No matter what goes around the mountain, no matter what storms are going around, the mountain just stays. Now let's add the breath. Rooting through your feet, inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, release the arms. Good, inhale. Exhale. Let the breath initiate the movement. Inhale, the movement fills the breath, look up. And exhale, breath and movement. This is really important part of yoga. Coordinating the breath and your movement. One more, inhale, lift the arms. Now stay there, interlace your fingers. I'm gonna move back a little bit. Interlace your fingers. Press the palms up toward the ceiling and now side lean. Firm your legs, engage your quads like you feel like you're lifting your kneecaps up. And press your arms really straight, open the intercostal muscles, the muscles between your ribs. Full breath in. Long breath out. On the next inhalation, come up. And please go to the other side. Press your navel gently back towards spine. Stretch your arms, stretch your legs. Full breath in. Long breath out. And on the next inhalation, inhale, come up. Exhale, release the arms. Ha, ah, so good. Now, cat cow. So bend your knees. You're in a yoga huddle. 
Look at your knees, they're parallel. Inhale, arch your spine, shoulders back, exhale, round your spine, chin to chest. Inhale, arch. Stay wide across your top chest, pin your elbows to your ribs. Exhale, round your spine, scoop out the belly. Keep going, I'll show you from the side. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round. Chin to chest, tailbone down. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round. Two more. Inhale, arch. Wake up your spine. Exhale, round. This is called Sashumna Nadi, the divine cord of your being. Then inhale, arch. Stay there. Place hands on hips. Press into your feet. Open up the arms to the ceiling. Lift up. Exhale, the hands in front of the heart. Now let's go right away into a modified down dog using the chair. So if you're using a chair, your hands are on the front corners of the chair. If you're going directly to the floor, open the fingers nice and wide, open the arms wide. Get a strong foundation going and then step back into an upside down V shape. So bend your knees, raise the sit bones high, get some concavity here, the lower lumbar area. So free up your hamstrings by bending your knees at first. Please lift your upper arms, your armpits, your upper chest, and your navel. Stretch your tailbone back. Stretch your heart forward. Stretch your spine. And now let's add the legs. Bend one knee. Lean into the straight leg hip. Alternate that. Gently do that again, walking the legs, the knees are bending and straightening. Sense inwardly, feel the breath. And notice how when you breathe fully, while you're doing the poses, that can bring a sense of ease. You're making space in your body. You're expanding your breath, bringing more vitality into each cell. And now nod your head yes and nod your head no. Release the neck, release the head. Feel like you're emptying out all your thoughts, worries, concerns, just for now, onto the floor. From here, leave your feet where they are, come onto tiptoes. Bring the shoulders forward. Lift your thighs, your hips, your navel. Lift the back of your head. Breathe here. And then pull back, hips back, thighs back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Please try that again. Inhale forward. Exhale. Pull the hips back, thighs back. Move your inner thighs back. And breathe. Good. Please step the right leg forward and lunge. So the right knee is vertical over the front ankle. Back heel is lifted. Inhale, lift your back thigh. Lift from the inside of your thigh. Lift it up. Yeah. And then the hips lift and bend the front knee more. Good. So you can stay here, just work the grounding of your feet, your legs, the strength. Or for more challenge, make your hands light, bring your hands onto your hips, lift your chest, squeeze your shoulder, your elbows back toward each other. Look up to where the wall meets the ceiling. You can stay here. Another variation is to lift the arms. As you lift, the arms, let the energy go beyond your fingers. So you're not curling your fingers like this. You're really reaching up. So don't let the hands curl like that. Really open. Full breath in. Long breath out. In every pose, we want to find a, a dynamic sense of ease. Good. Hold on. Step back in one or more steps. Downward facing dog. Now take the left leg forward and lunge. Again, you want to get a right angle going here if you can. Knee vertical over ankle, not in front of it. Slide your back toes back a little bit. Lift your back heel. It's going to engage your calf muscle. Lift your back thigh, lift your hips, bend the front knee more. Yeah, good. So again, you can stay here. That's variation A. Variation B, you make your hands light. You bring your hands onto your hips. Variation C, lift the chest, squeeze your elbows back, and then lift your arms, one or both arms. Try to get your hip points square to the front. And find that balance, that dynamic balance between effort and ease. 
The breath will help you do that. Yes, it's a challenging moment, but allow the breath to give you that energy that you need and the calm that you need to do the pose. Very good. And then hold on. Please step back and one more step. Back into downward facing dog, which is like the home base pose. You can bend your knees and stretch your inner thighs back, hips back, and breathe. Really good, really good. Now take the right leg forward once again in a lunge, and let's do a twist. Now, those of you with the chair, you're going to put your left forearm across the seat of the chair, lengthening your spine. Stay there a moment. Those of you without the chair, I want you to lift your torso, lift the left arm up, and twist toward the right knee like this. More challenge is you hook the left elbow to the outside of the right knee, press your palms, and here you are. So back to the chair version. Your left forearm is across the seat of the chair. Your right thumb is tacking the right top of the right thigh down, lengthening in your spine, everyone. Option is to lift the top arm up. Lean back a little bit. Firm your feet, firm your legs. Again, find that dynamic balance between effort and ease. And breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Really good. Hold on. Hands either go to chair or to floor. Step back. Downward facing dog. That becomes a resting moment, yeah? Breathe. Mm. Good. Take the left leg forward. Those of you on the chair, the forearm, the right forearm is on the seat of the chair. Left thumb is going to tack the top of your left thigh down. Stay there a moment. Those of you without the chair, lift the torso, shoulders over hips. Right arm will lift up and then twist to your left. The right hand goes to the outside of the left knee. You can stay there. Or more challenge, hook the right elbow. To the outside of the left knee, press your palms. Look up to the top elbow. Steady the feet, steady the legs. Breathe in and breathe out, yeah, at your own pace. Let me just show back to the chair, lengthening your spine. Revolve the torso, lift the top arm up. And gently breathe. Stretch your bones, stretch. Yes, good. Hold on. Hands to chair or floor once again. Downward facing dog. Now walk forward to the front of your mat or to the chair and let's take a standing forward fold. So those of you without the chair, the hands will come to the floor. Those of you with the chair, bow. Forehead can lightly rest on the seat of the chair. Forearms can come onto the chair. And if this is hard for you, go ahead and inhale, bend your knees. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. See if your hands want to touch the floor. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend. Exhale, slowly straighten. One more. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. Now everybody, bend your knees. Look forward. You can walk your hands onto the chair and your hands on hips. Squeeze your elbows together. Slowly come up to standing and release. Excellent. That was really good. All right. Let's open up the shoulders a little bit. So please grab a strap. Your feet will be outer hip width apart. Take a good length of strap. What is that like? Three feet, four feet. We can experiment with that. Pull on the strap. I want that action to continue, just pulling, gentle pulling on the strap. Inhale, lift the arms up. As you exhale, take them behind you. You'll feel a pectoral stretch. You might want to stop here, or if you have the range of motion, go a little more, or go all the way down to your hips behind your back. Then inhale, lift up. Exhale and release. Yes, so again, use the breath. Inhale. Use the breath to find the ease and the movement. So yoga is not about pain ever, but you will feel some sensation. You will engage some muscles that perhaps haven't been used in, in some amount of time. 
So you will feel something, but I'm, my hope is, <clears throat> my hope is that, inhale, come back, exhale, release, is that it's a feel good kind of exploration. Inhale, lift up, <clears throat> exhale, take it behind you. Perhaps a little more as the body starts to open up, or perhaps you'll stay there. Really listen into your body, because every day it's different. Every day your practice is going to be a little bit different. Inhale, come up, exhale, release. Either rest or try one more. Inhale, exhale, take it behind you. Your hands are pulling the strap taut, so the hands are pulling apart. Yes, good, good, good. Maybe you'll get all the way here, maybe not this month or this year, but eventually. Inhale, come up, exhale, and release. And those of you that are very new to the practice, just want to remind you and just encourage you, Things that were difficult in the beginning or that are difficult now, over time become easier, I promise you. Over time, it's one of the definitions of yoga that what was difficult becomes easier. All right, now armpit to armpit measure. Inhale, lift up, exhale, take it behind your neck. Not on your neck. Now press your elbows back behind yourself, lower your front ribs down, pull your hands apart, all this at the same time. And you might feel the upper back muscles really engaging nicely. You might feel a little shaking in your hands and arms. That's totally normal. Then inhale, come up. Exhale, release. Roll the shoulders up and back and down. And back and up and down. And if your legs are tired at this point, you can always do these upper arm exercises sitting down. <clears throat> Once more. Armpit to armpit. Excuse me. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, take it behind your neck, but not on your neck. Press your elbows back behind yourself. Pull on the straps so your hands are pulling in opposite directions. Lower the front ribs down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Gently notice what's going on in the body. Inhale, come up. Exhale, and release. Excellent. All right. Now I want you to take your chair and have the high back facing you, or you can do this without a chair. You might um, eventually want to have blocks on either side. So take a wide stance of your feet. They're going to be parallel. Now I'll do opposite of you. So open your right toes 90 degrees. Turn the back toes in about 30 degrees, and please draw an imaginary line. From the front heel straight back, it should bisect the arch of the back foot. All right, so we're gonna do moving warrior two. You can have one hand on chair, one hand on hip, or both hands on hips. Look to the front foot and the front knee. Inhale, bend your front knee, point it straight forward. Exhale, straighten it. Again, inhale, bend the front knee, Exhale, straighten. Very important that the knee opens toward the pinky side of your foot, not the big toe side. Good. Excellent. Now we're gonna add the arm, one or both arms, with palm up this time. Inhale, lift your front arm as you bend your front knee, and straighten, now maybe both arms. Inhale, lift both arms, bend the front knee, exhale. Release the arms. Inhale, lift the arms. You're looking toward your front hand. Exhale and release. Once more, inhale, stretch everything. Yes, good, and release. Now bend the front knee, put your front hand on that you're really gonna lean on it, and even bend the elbow a little bit and hug the lower ribs. So now the next movement is this. You're gonna inhale, stretch the top arm over your top ear, and the hand comes even below your head. And then as you exhale, straighten the front leg, return your hand to the top hip. So let's do that together. Inhale, bend the front knee. You're leaning on it with your front hand. The top hand is stretching all the way over. You're opening up the rib muscles, the intercostal muscles, and release. Once more, inhale, bend the front knee, stretch the top arm. Expand your breath. And then exhale, come back. Wonderful. It's a beautiful opening for the muscles between your ribs. Now, parallel on your feet, walk in for a moment. March in place, let go of any tension you may have created. And then open the feet once again, parallel. Now please open your left toes, 90 degrees. 
Hands can be one hand on chair, one hand on hip, or both hands on hips. Back toes are turned in a little bit. Reminder, draw an imaginary line from your front heel straight back. It should bisect the arch of the back foot. So alignment is very important in the practice. Look at your front foot and knee. Inhale, bend the front knee. Exhale, straight. Inhale, bend. You want that knee to end up vertical over the front ankle. Exhale, straighten. Once more. Rooting through your feet. Inhale, bend the front knee. Exhale, straighten. Now let's add the arm. One or both arms. So palms are up for today's practice. Inhale, lift the front arm as you bend the front knee. Exhale, lower the arm. Straighten the leg. Try both arms. Inhale, lift both arms. Keep monitoring your front knees pointing straight forward exhale once more inhale and exhale now bend the front knee i want you to lean on it so it's your left foot and your left hand rooting bend that front elbow a little bit in toward your lower ribs and the first move is your inhale and you're lifting the top arm over your top ear and then as you exhale, straighten the front leg, return that top hand to the top hip. Inhale, open the breath, open the body. Exhale. Once more, inhale, reach, reach, reach. Expand the space in your body and the length of your breath. Exhale, good. Hold on, parallel the feet and walk in. More two place. Let go of any tension you may have created. All right, now just notice before we go into the next pose, just take a full breath in, long breath out. And you'll notice as you continue to practice, some of the tension that may have been somewhere in your body starts to release, starts to ease. And some of the, the tension in the mind starts to release by bringing your awareness fully into this moment right now fully into the alignment and the actions and the attitude that you bring, there comes more ease into the mind and into the body. So take a wide stance. Open your uh, right toes. We'll start with bending that front knee. And right away now, bring your front forearm onto the front thigh. Top hand can be on chair or on hip if you're working without the chair. The block can be on the outer edge outside of your front ankle. All right, so here we're going to go into modified Parsvakonasana, extended side angle. First, establish your foundation, that's your feet, evenly weighted. Back foot has as much weight as the front foot. Now, revolve the torso open. Lower belly sweeps to the top. Lay the top arm along the top edge of your body, or you can stay here. This is, if you just want to work your feet and legs, just stay here. You want to add the arm. You're gonna lift the top arm all the way over your top ear. Hug that ear to the inner bicep. Keep bending your front knee more. Keep rooting the outer edge of your back foot. Sense the delicious twist in the torso. And those of you that have been practicing a while and wanna go deeper still, you can take your bottom hand and put it on a block, any height that you wish, or all the way to the floor. This is either when I go really deep in the pose. Full breath in. Long breath out. Please press your navel a little bit back towards spine. Yes, even here. Good. Make sure your bottom shoulder stays open. So you can even, if you have your hand on the block, you can quarter turn it to the left, toward the pinky side of your hand. Really good. And you're breathing. Expand the breath. To come out of the pose, here's a great thing to do. You can press on that front knee with both hands. Press to straighten the leg and come up. Parallel the feet, walk your feet in together. So you notice that pressing into the foundation makes it easier to come back up, easier and safer. All right, just one more side to do in that pose. Take a wide stance, feet are parallel. Open your left toes 90 degrees, back toes turn in a little bit. Bend the front knee right away. Front forearm onto front thigh. Put the block to the outside of your ankle if you think you're going to use it. One hand on chair or one hand on hip. Stay here a moment and really root through your feet, especially the back foot. So evenly weight your feet. 
lengthening the spine, we're gonna love the torso open. Oh, this delicious twist. Yeah, as you do that twist, you help get rid of tension in the body. You could stay here or take the top arm all the way over your top ear and stretch. Big breath in, long breath out. Big breath in, long breath out. Stay rooted, top ear hugs to the inner bicep. Breathe. Really good. So to come out of it, remember, really safe is to put both hands pressing into that front knee, straighten the leg, and parallel your feet, bring them in, and march in place. Really good. Now take your chair to the side so that the high back is next to you. Let's go right into tree pose. Put all your weight on your right foot. I'll do opposite of you. Option is to hold on to the chair. Once again, root through the four corners of your foot. That's the big toe mound, the inner heel, the pinky toe mound, the outer heel, the other heel of foot rests on the inner ankle. So there's choice A. Choice B, sole of foot is on inner calf. Or choice C, come all the way up to your inner thigh. You can hold there with one hand as I'm modeling. Bring the other hand into the heart. Gaze at a particular point. This is called drishti. So a point in front of you will help you balance, a soft gaze, or even down on the floor in front of you. Now if your leg doesn't want to stay, you can lower it a little bit. Please bring both hands into the heart. Then lift your elbows, lift your palms, separate your hands, stretch down into the floor, so root the energy down in the lower body, and then from that rooting, rise the lower, the upper body up. A little bit more, good. Soften what you can now. Soften your eyes, your jaw, breath. Don't worry if there's like a little swaying going on. That's okay, just stay rooted, and appreciate how much your ankle has to work. Standing on one, one foot, for the majority of the weight is not necessarily easy. We're gonna hug your hips toward each other. Yes, breathe in and breathe out. Good, Vrikshasana. Hands together, release the pose. And now, other side. So all your weight now is in the left foot. Press the four corners of the foot down. Open the right knee out a little bit. You can be here, this is the most stable version. Ball up, right foot pressing down. More challenge, foot is on inner calf. Max challenge, foot comes all the way up to the inner thigh. Toes, sort of toward the back of your inner thigh, toes press down. Now to help that foot stay, you hug your inner thigh into the sole of the foot. Little adduction here. Mm -hmm. A pressing action, yes and hug your hips toward each other, and press your palms toward each other. So there's this imaginary midline drawn down the center of your body, and when you hug in to that midline, it gives you strength, it gives you stability. Now lift your elbows, lift your palms. If that's too hard, one hand can stay on the chair. Relax the shoulders. Root through that bottom foot. Bottom leg, lift up out of the waistline. Grow your tree. Yes, reach your fingertips up toward the ceiling. And if you have a little shaking, that's okay. The tree branches are blowing in the wind. And that adaptability makes it even stronger to survive any storms, right? That ability to adapt. We need that. <laughs> and then release, and it's okay to fall out of the pose safely. March in place. Good. Now, with your chair here, let's go into another down dog. Let's do the L shape or full dog on the floor. Oops, watch out for any props. Stretch your spine. Arms are fully straight. Bend your knees. Remember to lift your upper arms, armpits, upper chest, navel. Keeping that work to straighten your legs to the degree that you can today. Press your inner thighs back and breathe. Good. Now for a little fun variation, bring your inner edges of your feet together. 
Whether your hands are on the floor or on the chairs, I'm doing, try this. Inner edges of feet together. Step the right leg back. Keep the toes on the floor for a moment. Lift your navel. When you're ready, if you're ready, lift the right leg up a little bit. Good. So your hands, especially people with hands on the floor, the hands need to really firm into the floor. Your hands on the floor will press down and forward. Stretch the foot that's in the air back. Flex the foot. Good, good. And touch down. Bend your knees a moment. Left foot on floor, everyone. Toes are on the floor. Engage your core. Lift your navel towards spine. Keep that navel moving towards spine as you lift the leg. A little bit or a lot of it. Stretch everything. Good breath in. Long breath out. Have a little fun with it. Try to find this dynamic ease between effort and ease. Good. Touch down. Walk forward. And breathe. Good. Now, please sit on your chair a moment. <clears throat> Let's do, or you can sit on the floor. Let's do a seated twist. So if you're on the chair, sit toward the middle front of your mat, knees are bent. Your right hand will hold the sidebar, the other hand comes to the outside of the knee. Inhale, lengthening your spine. Exhale, gently twist to your right. Now, I'll just model those of you on the floor. Extend your legs out, bend your left knee, lean on your left hand, inhale, lengthening your spine and gently Twist to the left. Good. Yes. Keep going. Everyone, breathe here. Whichever position you're in, floor or chair, I want you to lengthen in your spine on the inhale. And then exhale. Twist a little deeper. Good. Try to get your breath moving circumferentially around your spine. So all around your spine. You're making lots of space in the body. As you inhale, you lengthen. As you exhale, you release any tension that you may have. Full breath in, long breath out. Good, inhale, come back to center. Please go to the other side. Left hand holds the sidebar, I'm doing opposite of you. Other hand is to the outside of the left knee. Inhale, lengthen in the spine. Exhale, gently twist. And then I'll model on the floor. If you're on the floor now, it's the right leg bent. You're leaning on the right hand. Inhale, lengthen in your spine. Exhale, twist to the right. Keep the straight leg foot flexed. Breathe circumferentially all around your spine so both sides of your torso are nice and even. A couple breaths here. You stay in the pose a few breaths. Every inhalation, do lengthen in your spine. Every exhalation, sense this delicious ringing out of your spine. To come out of it, please inhale, come back to center. Let's take a seated forward fold, or those of you on the floor, straight leg, forward fold. You can walk your hands along the floor till they get to your feet. From here, hands and knees bow forward. Release your neck and head. Stretch the back body. Hands can come to the floor. Release your neck, release your head. Good. And then slowly come back up. Excellent. Good. So now I'd like to invite you all to the floor to come onto your belly. And what I'd like you to do is please take a blanket. Let me show you what I'd like you to do. Take your blanket. Fold it, or towel if you have a towel, into a long rectangle. I want you to place it in front of the hip points. So right in front of these hip points as you lay down on your mat. We'll do uh, cobra variations, which are really good for strengthening your lower back and all the muscles along your spine, paraspinal muscles. So come onto your blanket. And now your hands will come to the sides of your chest, turn the fingers out a little bit toward the pinkies. 
Start with your feet outer, hip width apart. Forehead to floor. Good. So here, press into your hands. Press into the tops of your feet. Lift your navel. And then inhale, lift your shoulders toward your ears. And lift head, lift torso. Stay wide across your top chest. You don't have to come up very high. This is quite challenging, or it can be quite challenging. Gaze down the bridge of your nose. Breathe. Feel your upper back muscles working. Yes, and lower down. Try that again. Hands press, toes press, navel lifts, tailbone down. Inhale, lift your head. Lift your shoulders toward ears and up toward ceiling, not back toward your waist. Breathe here. And lower. Make a forearm pillow. Turn your head to one side and rest. Wiggle your hips out a little bit. And gently breathe. Ah, mm, find the ease in this moment. Let go into the ease and the support of the floor. Now, choices. You can continue resting and skip the next back bend variation. It's going to be cobra, which is what we just did. And at the same time, you lift one leg, then you lift the other leg, and then there's a variation where both legs are lifting. So Let's try together if you're up for it. Legs are outer hip width apart. Start with forehead on the floor. Firm your hands into the floor like you're gripping the floor, like you're clawing the floor. Inhale, lift your head, upper body, and left leg. And then lower down. And again, you don't have to lift too high, so don't overdo. Inhale, lift upper body and right leg. Shoulder blades on back, squeeze your elbows in toward ribs and lower. Let's try that once more each side. Inhale, lift upper body, lift left leg. If this is too much, feel free to skip it. And lower. Once again, lift the right leg up. And lower. Make a forearm pillow. Turn your head to the other side now and rest. Wiggle out your hips. Good. One more set, but this time the legs will start all the way together. And as you lift your upper body, you're going to scissor the legs open. Then as you lower your upper body, you'll scissor the legs closed. All right. So see if this is going to be working for you today. If not, just watch, enjoy, or rest. Forehead starts on the floor, toes press, tailbone presses. Inhale, lift your head, lift your navel. Up to its spine and open the legs wide as you lift up. And then exhale, scissor the legs back together and lower everything down. Inhale, lift up and lower. You're opening the legs wide. Exhale and lower. Very good. Now come onto your forearms. Let's just do a little something for the abs. Tuck the toes under. Your knees will press down for this one. Elbows are under armpits, forearms parallel, palms face the floor. So from here, drag your elbows back toward your hips isometrically, which means you, you, the arms are not really moving, but you'll feel your torso pull forward and release long out of your waistline. So that's good. Keep that. Now melt your upper body between your upper arms. It's a little bit of relaxing down toward the earth there. Good. Now here, on the next inhalation, you're going to tuck the toes, press your knees, inhale, lift your hips. Tailbone now, try to round your back. Mm -hmm. Feel the work? Can you feel your lower abs working? Good. Hold it, hold it, breathe. Round your back more. And release. Either rest or try one more. Toes press, knees press. Inhale, lift your hips, round your back. Now, if you'd like to try a variation where you lift your knees up off the floor and you're onto a forearm plank, you can try that. Press out through your heels if that's too much. Put the knees down and rest. Good, nice. Let's come back into child's pose. Walk your elbows and forearms back. Open the knees. 
Take your hips as far back toward your heels as is appropriate for you today. Maybe your forehead will rest on your blanket. Maybe your arms will come alongside the body. This is child's pose, Valasana. Full breath in, long breath out. Send your breath to the back body. Really good. And slowly press your hands into the floor to lift your torso up and swing your legs around. Wonderful. Let's go into Dandasana pose, staff pose. So in Dandasana, go ahead and manually roll your thighs in and widen the fleshy part out. So the thighs roll in and the fleshy part pulls out. Come take your hands behind you to support. Rock to the fronts of your sit bones. Even bend your knees for a second. And rock to the fronts of the bony bone and the ischial tuberosities. Lift your sternum. Lift your shoulders up and back. So with my elbows a little bit bent, gives me more room to play with the shoulders. Yeah? So try that. Come up on your fingertips. Bend your elbows. Inhale. Roll the shoulders up and back. Yeah. Good. Like that. Now straighten the legs. Press the backs of your legs downward. This is a pose. Dandasana pose. Full breath in. Long breath out. Excellent. Great. Now bend your knees. You can help with your hands. Let's do another thing for your abs. Navasana. Lift your sternum like someone's pulling a string out from your chest. Shoulder blades are on your back. So go wide across the top chest. Lean back a little bit. You're holding behind the legs. Find your balance between tailbone and sit bone, then lift one shin. Other shin, you can keep alternating or do both shins at the same time. Feet are flexed, toes are flared. Stay here. Or straighten your legs. Pull the pinky edges of your feet back toward the outer hips. Or look, no hands. Find your balance. Have a little fun with it. You gotta find that balance, the dynamic balance for more ease, right? Just enough effort to, to hold the pose, not overdo it, and then release. Take a breath. Really good. Now, take your straw, and I want you to do strap around both feet. This is gonna be Pashimottanasana. Seated forward fold. Bend your knees a moment. Now, if, if sitting on the floor or sitting on the floor and folding forward is hard, I just want to add one thing. You can take a blanket, fold it in half like this, slip it under your hips, sit on the front edge of the blanket. That'll make it easier for you. For a good alignment of the pelvis. You want that top edge of the sacrum moving in toward the body. So inhale, lengthen in your spine, bend your elbows out to the side. You're starting with knees bent, but then you fold. Now, if your hamstrings are very tight, this is a good way to do it, with knees slightly bent. If you're looking for more challenge, scoot the heels out a little more and try to get your legs fully straight. Try to press the, the backs of the legs down. Feet are flexed, toes are flared. Bow a little bit or a lot of it. Stop where you need to stop. You can inch up on the strap. Maybe then you don't need the strap anymore. Maybe you're holding your toes. Look forward. Once again, stretch your spine. Make space in the spine and then back. Mm. Release your neck. Release your head. And breathe. So actively engage your thighs, your quads, all right? Engage the front of the leg to release the back of the leg. It's good to remember that. Full breath in, long breath out. Um, especially if you've been doing a lot of walking or running these days, it is really nice to, 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 to balance that out. Good. And slowly come up. Excellent. 
All right, now I'd like you to lay on your back. And we'll do a moving bridge pose. So come to lay down. Knees are bent, feet are outer hip width apart. I hope you're all doing good. I hope you're feeling a little more ease now that you're on the floor. <laughs> Easy to find more ease when you're laying down, right? It's so great to get on the floor a little bit. All right, so here we go. It's going to be, I'll show you the arm movement first. Inhale, lift the arms up overhead, palms face each other. Exhale, lower the arms. That's the arm movement. Now, the lower body, press feet. Inhale, lift hips, stretch your knees toward your toes, stretch your tailbone toward your toes, chin lifts away from chest, and lower down. Now we'll put it together. Inhale, lift arms up overhead, lift hips. Maybe your thumbs will come to touch the floor behind your head, maybe not, it's okay. And then lower down. Stay rooted in your feet, especially the inner edges of your feet, all right? Root through the feet. Inhale, lift the arms, chin away from chest. Exhale, lower the arms. Really try to lengthen your inhalation as you lift your arms. Inhale, 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 inhale. Stretch the breath, stretch your upper spine. Exhale, 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 exhale. Now make sure your legs don't flop out. They need to stay parallel. One more or rest. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, and release. So good, let's do a reclining twist. So for this one, I want you to take a block, if you have a block, and don't worry, you can do it without a block as well. The wide face of the block will go between your lower legs, flex your feet, flare the toes, and if you're doing it without the block, just same position of the legs, just with some space between your legs, little space. Arms are in cactus, so bending at right angles at the elbows, rest the backs of the hands on the floor. If your hands are up like this, they won't lay down, then lay your arms out straight, like an airplane. All right, good. So inhale here, you're squeezing the block a little bit, a little adduction there. Flex your feet, flare the toes. Now rock the legs over to the right to the degree that you can. It might only be a third of the way. It might be... 50% of the way, it might be all the way you pick. Notice that opposite shoulder wants to come off the floor, that's fine. Arch your lower lumbar spine, stick your sit bones out behind you, breathe here, and then come back. Please go to the other side. Move your, <laughs> move your chair if you need some room. <laughs> all right, good, flex your feet, Flare the toes, arch the lower lumbar spine, you stick your sit bones out behind you. Notice this opposite shoulder wants to come off, that's okay. As you inhale, stretch your left, uh, stretch the hand that's on the same side of your knees further out to that same side, and then the shoulder that's lifting up off the floor, invite it to get heavy with each exhalation. So good, come back. Either rest, or let's try that once more, now that you know where we're going with it. Sometimes it's really nice to repeat the poses, you, your body will just go deeper with it. So let's give it a go. Inhale, and as you exhale, lower the knees to the side. Arch your lower lumbar spine. Invite the opposite shoulder to release and get heavy. Your eyes can look up to the ceiling. Full breath in, long breath out. Notice you're opening up your intercostal muscles once again. And please come back. Please go to the other side. Arch, your eyes can look up to the ceiling. Stretch the hand that's on the opposite side of the knees. You can Stretch it out, arch the lower lumbar, breathe. You're getting some more space right here in the top intercostal muscles. And as you make more space for the breath, you'll find more ease. Lengthen the inhalation, lengthen the exhalation. 
Yeah, have a real nice sense of letting go and softening with every exhalation. Good. Ah, take the block, put it on the side. Let's just do now um, a moving uh, series. Now you're going to hold behind your thighs, pick up your feet off the floor. So inhale, straighten the legs up to the ceiling, bring your toes over your eyes if you can, and stretch up through your heels. So the backs of the legs are really stretching up. And then release, bend the knees. Good, try that again. Inhale, stretch the legs, the toes go up to the ceiling, and then the heels reach up to the ceiling as you flex your feet. And then bend your knees and release. If you want to add a little more challenging arm variation to that, You'll inhale, lift the arms up. As the feet go up, the arms go up overhead. Flex your feet, reach up through the toes. Exhale, release the arms, release the legs into a bend. One or two more, you pick. Inhale, stretch, exhale, and release. Again, if that's too hard, you can hold on behind your thighs. Inhale, stretch up through the heels. And release. Wonderful. Now, hold your hands onto your knees. Open your knees wide. And just hang out here. First, pull your knees in toward the armpits. And you'll feel the lower part of your hips lift up and the lower back will round. Sense that. Sense and feel that. And then try to drop your sit bones down. So now you're introducing a little bit more of a lower lumbar arch. So you're pulling your knees in, which does tend to round the lower back, but then you drop your sit bones down toward the floor, which tends to arch the lower lumbar. Just feel what that feels like and breathe. Good. Let's do happy baby now. You can go directly holding onto the outer edges of your feet, elbows inside knees, Pull down with the hands, press up with the feet, or you can do it with, an, with a strap to assist you in that pose, which is nice. You put the strap around your feet, you widen the feet, outer shoulder width apart. Arms are fully straight. Pull down with the strap, pull down with the arms. At the same time, keeping your knees bent, press up with the leg energy. Good, and the soles of your feet are facing the ceiling as if those feet were standing on the ceiling. Yeah, so use your own eyes to, to see that. Press from the inner thighs up along the inseams of your legs, up through the inner edges of your feet, up toward the ceiling. Yeah, and then the outer edge of your foot pulls down toward the floor a little bit more. There's a dynamic action going here, right? There's the pulling down with the arms. There's the pressing up with the legs. Again, we want to find that dynamic balance, right? And in that way, we find more ease. Release with the grip. And now you can wrap up to sitting. We're going to go into a meditation now. So I'd like you to sit up. You can sit on a block. I, I like to sit this way, it's just me. You don't have to sit the same way. But I put the block this way and then I put it between my lower legs. I'm sitting on my shins. My hip points are sitting on the block. If it's more comfortable for you to sit cross-legged, you know. But if you're sitting cross-legged, make sure your knees are lower than your front hip points. Feel free to use your chair once again for meditation as well. So you, you all know that the body needs rest and it needs to sleep at night, normal. But we all, um, or not all of us, know the mind really needs to rest. So in order to find more ease in our body, we get good rest, we do some exercise, some movements, we get rid of the stress and the inflammation in the body with yoga moves, right? For the mind to release the tension and stress in the mind, meditation is an absolutely wonderful tool. 
So for today's meditation, I'd like to do a practice with you called choiceless awareness. It, it, it's a, a practice where we're not, and of course we're not pushing away thoughts. In fact, the opposite. You lay out the welcome mat and you welcome whatever arises in the field of your awareness, whether it's worrying, list making, um, sensation in the body, sound, whatever comes in, rehashing old conversations, shoulda, woulda, couldas in your mind, you welcome it. And what will be the anchor in that process is the breath awareness. So practice that now. First, sit up nice and tall. However you're sitting, get grounded in the foundation, whatever part of your body is touching the floor. Lean back a little bit so you're more in a receptive position rather than a doing position. Stretch your spine, lift your sternum, shoulders float up and back, back of neck is long. And we'll do a five minute meditation today so we'll have time for a nice longer shalasana today. Close the eyes or three quarters close the eyes. Draw your attention inward. And to begin, I want you to just notice your breath. So you're going to breathe in. Notice that breath. And then breathe out. Notice that breath. Rest your awareness simply on that wave of breath. Notice your inhalation. Notice your exhalation. We'll start with a bell, we'll end with a bell. We'll go for five minutes, I'll watch the time. We don't have to worry about it. And as you are practicing breath awareness, again, thoughts will arise, sensations, sounds. And as each one arises, I'd like you to, for example, if you hear some sound in your home or outside in the yard, give it a gentle label, just call it sound, and let it go by like clouds in the sky. So you're not going to add more thoughts about that, like, oh, is it going to rain necessarily? <laughs> Instead, every time a thought arises, come back to your breath. So it might be breathe in, breathe out. Oh, I hear the dog barking. Breathe in, breathe out. You might be listening. Oh, I still hear the dog barking, listening. And then let it go. Breathe in, breathe out. Or it might be a sensation. Oh, my right hip is feeling a little tight today. Hmm, sensation. Come back to the breath awareness. Continue now with your own breath pace, welcoming whatever arises. Into the field of your awareness. And let the anchor of your practice today be the in-breath and the out-breath. Continue to refresh your posture, sitting up tall. 
Notice if any emotions arise. Maybe it's boredom. Maybe it's anxiety. Just notice it. Oh, there it is. And let it go like a cloud in the sky. Come back to the in-breath. And the out-breath. Continue to be very gentle with yourself in this practice. Sometimes the same thought comes up over and over again. Very gently notice. Give it a name. Maybe it's worrying, list making, planning. Let it go like a cloud in the sky. And then bring your awareness gently back to your in-breath and your out-breath. Very simply coming back again and again to the anchor of the practice today. Now you can gently release that practice. And for those curious minds, that was actually closer to six minutes. So bravo, you did your meditation today. And now I want to invite you now to come to lie down for just a few minutes of Shavasana, which means uh, it's the final deep rest. It is the pose of repose where you can integrate all the benefits of your practice. And really allow yourself to feel a sense of ease as you give into the support of the floor and just rest your body just for a few minutes. Let's just do three minutes of Shavasana together. You deserve it after a nice practice today. So make yourself comfortable and warm. I will let you know with a chime when that three minutes is up. Allow yourself to use all the tools of yoga and meditation to find more ease. Give yourself just a few minutes to just be, just rest. Soften your eyes, your jaw, let the jaw separate the lower jaw from the upper jaw. 
take a swallow, release the tongue deeper into your throat. You can relax the skin of your scalp, the skin on your face. Relax the shoulders, arms, and hands. Relax the belly and all the internal organs. Relax the hips, the thighs, the knees, the lower legs, and the feet. Let your entire body receive the support of the floor. Good, and now slowly take a full breath in and a long breath out. Maybe even stretch your arms up overhead. Stretch like you've been in a deep sleep. And then release. Very slowly bend your knees, roll to one side, and start to bring yourself up to sitting. Bring the hands together in front of the heart, palms press. This is Anjali Mudra, thumbs into the heart. Spread the fingers and gently bow your head to yourself for honoring yourself with practice today. I thank you so much for choosing to spend a little time with me today. And I wish you a beautiful weekend. I will be teaching again on Sunday.